We make you smarter at the Modern Nose Clinic because we want you to know how to read your allergy test results. This is the first page of your allergy test results. Mind you, we will improve this over time, so it may look slightly different for you today. We want you to turn your attention to the lower left corner of your first page. You'll see a list of antigens. Antigens are the different medicines we presented your body with. The first two are called histamine and glycerin. We call these controls. You should react to the histamine. If you did not react to the histamine, you may have been on one of the medications we asked you to stop. A very common thing is vitamins. There's vitamin water, different power drinks. That can sometimes cause that to occur. And sometimes your body just doesn't react. If we repeat the study in the future, sometimes you do. And sometimes we just need to test you in some other way. The glycerin is a fancy word for the liquid that we carry all the different antigens in. So each one of these tests have some glycerin in it. If you react to the glycerin, then we need to subtract that number from all of your other results. So you don't need to worry about the how we use these numbers, but we call them controls to make sure that our, our results are as accurate as possible. The next category, numbers three through eight, are the epidermals. Epidermal means skin, epidermis, and, and I know it's not a perfect uh, way to understand this, but these are all things that float around the air on the inside of your house. If you have allergies to these things and you have symptoms while you're inside the house or first thing in the morning, these could be important. The next category starts the pollens and why not start them off with a bang? These are the grass pollens and they're a real big deal, especially in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, mind you, I did something tricky here. I folded the paper and I clustered them together. The company we use to make our allergy test um, results um, has them all spread out and I find that to be confusing. But they happen to be antigen number 9, 10, 25, 26, and 27. So if you look for them, these are the grass pollens. They can get you really bad from April 1st to July 4th. However, if you go to our website, you go to our allergy section, we have a pollen tracker. You just enter your zip code. You will find that you are, you're exposed to grass pollens for far more months than that, but those are the peak months. The next section are the weed pollens. And again, I had to fold the paper quite a bit to accomplish this. They're numbers 11, 12, 13, 14, what does that say? 15, 16, 34, and 35. Um, and again, we will probably change up our list. So this is what it is right now. However, these will get you in the fall. So if you're getting symptoms in the fall, it's probably one of these. Look to see whether or not you've got any severe reactions. That will be the weed. I would like to tell you that simply weeding your yard will do the trick, but that's not so much the case because weed pollen floats in the air. And unless your neighbor, Minto Brown, and everywhere else in town weeds their, um, their yards, it's not gonna work that way. Still, weed your yard. The final major category of pollen, tree pollen. These are numbers 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. There you go. And they will get you in the late winter and spring and leading up into the early part of summer. Each one may pollinate slightly differently. And once you know which one you're allergic to and you go to our allergy section on our website, type in your zip code, you can see when those particular pollens are high. That's a really useful trick. Whenever that, you know, that the December, um, January, we get like a really warm day, 50 degrees, 55 degrees, 60 degrees. And you're like, whoa, the winter's over, we survived. But you know it's not. It's gonna probably snow the next day. But that's when some trees start to pollinate. So if you have symptoms then, it may be a tree pollen. And mind you, the tree pollens do overlap with the grass pollens. This brings us to the mold allergies. And these are really more challenging. Right now, this is our list. It's going to change. It may change again down the road we probably will offer an extended mold test in the next few years. But right now, this is a pretty extensive list. If you're allergic to mold, boy, you'll be surprised where you'll come across it. It could be in the coffee grounds in that percolator coffee pot where no one at work bothers to throw the grounds out and they sit moist all the time in that moist coffee uh, pot. It could be in the kitchen sink and those dish rags that are wet and moist and the sponges. It could be in the camper or the tent that gets put away wet because, well, 
we live in Oregon. It could be in a lot of different places, in the shower, um, in the laundry room, in the minivan. In my household, that's where it was the worst. It was the minivan. Uh, we had spilled food and this and that, and you close the windows, and it's just, boy, it's a great place to grow mold. Um, we no longer have that minivan. Anyway, those are the molds, numbers 23, 24, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And by the way, um, people who say they're allergic to Christmas trees, it's often the mold in the Christmas trees that you're allergic to. So that's a little pearl for you. Which leaves us with the food allergies. These are the eight most common food allergies. Now listen, you might be lactose intolerant. That ain't an allergy. That means you get gas because you can't digest the milk. An allergy is when your body sees the milk, sees the protein in it, and reacts against it, which is also very common. But I'm just saying you may not be allergic to milk. It may still have gas and other problems that are maybe similar to a, um, an allergy. Um, hey, wouldn't that be great if your wheat allergy was not uh, positive? You don't need to worry about the gluten-free diet and you can kind of live your life a little bit. Um, if you have a relatively mild food allergy result, it could just be a sensitivity. Uh, if it's very severe, however, let's take it seriously. Go and watch our food allergy avoidance video. Go to our website, go to our video library, go to the allergy section and rewatch it. It's beyond the scope of this mini uh, education video here. Wow, y'all, that was a lot of stuff, wasn't it? But now you need to know how to interpret it. Luckily for you, this is pretty easy. I want you all to really focus on the end point. Yes, there's a skin prick wheel size. That's how big it was when they measured it. And that's a little bit more of a technical thing for us. We came up with an in-house uh, proprietary way of determining how allergic you are to different things that keeps the cost down and avoids using needles. So that's a little bit more complex and I don't wanna confuse you too much, but sure, if the number's really big, that's not good. But the end point, if it says three, that's a mild allergy. If it says four, that's a moderate allergy. If it says five, that's a severe allergy. And if it says six, that's a very severe allergy. You really want to try to treat the sixes and the fives. The fours and the threes, I would probably kind of look at what that was that you're allergic to and ask whether or not you find yourself to be symptomatic. But even with a five or a six, it might say that you're highly allergic to cats, but you rub your face in your cat and you don't get any drippy eye, stuffy nose, congestion, throat clearing, post-nasal drip. So you would not actually be allergic to the cat. So we really, you know, these are our measurements. They don't prove you're allergic to these items, but your body did react. Whether or not you get symptomatic, well, that's uh, a clinical question. So I hope that this has been helpful for you to understand how to interpret your allergy test results.